He made me happy, glad and Praise the Lord. Amen. I'll never forget the day. All right, we want our ushers to come at this time. We're going to receive our Sunday night offering that pays the bills here at the church. Again, let me take this moment to say that we welcome each and every one of you. you got a great-looking crowd for a Sunday night, and we just thank you so much for your faithfulness uh, to the house of the Lord. Bow your heads and your hearts to the Lord at this time. Heavenly Father, again, we're just grateful, God, to give to you, Lord. We thank you, God, for this facility that we have, Lord, and the, this body that you have put together and blessed us with, Lord. And I ask you to take this offering, God, and bless it, multiply it, and divide it, that it would continue to meet the need. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, where can I turn? When there's no one else I can turn to Who am I gonna talk to? When nobody wants to listen Who am I gonna lean on? When there's no foundation stable I know the rock, I know that's able I go to the rock I go to the rock of my salvation I go to the stone that the builders rejected Run to the mountain and the mountain stands by me The earth all around me is sinking sand On Christ the solid rock I stand When I need shelter, when I need a friend I go to the rock I go to the rock of my I go to the stone that the builders rejected Run to the mountain and the mountain stands by me The earth all around me is sinking sand On Christ the solid rock I stand When I need shelter, when I need a friend I go to the rock Storms have all passed over. Who am I gonna run to? When the winds of 
sorrow bread Is there a refuge In my time of great tribulation When my soul needs a consolation I go to the rock I go to the rock of my salvation I go to the stone that the builders reject Run to the mountain and the mountain stands by me. The earth all around me is sinking sin. On Christ the solid rock I stand. When I need shelter, when I need a friend, I go to the rock. I go to the rock of my salvation. I go to the stone that the builders rejected. Run to the mountain and the mountain stands by me. The earth all around me sinking sand. On Christ the solid rock I stand. When I need shelter, when I need a friend, I go to the rock. Oh, where can I turn? When there's no one else I can turn to. I'm not gonna talk to when there's no one here to listen. Who am I gonna lean on when there's no foundation stable? I go to the rock, I know that's able. I go to the rock, I go to the rock of my salvation. I go to the stone that the builders rejected. Run to the mountain and the mountain stands by me. The earth all around me is sinking sand. On Christ the solid rock I stand. When I need shelter, when I need a friend, I go to the rock. Praise the Lord. Come on, give him a hand clap of praise. Worship him. Amen. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord tonight. I, again, I just want to say we do thank each and every one of you for being here on this Sunday night service. If you was able to come early for a prayer meeting, we thank you for that as well. And may God bless you. Uh, let me make these announcements uh, that I did not, well, I, I did make this morning. I don't know of any, there is a few new ones. Uh, first of all, this Wednesday night will be our Wednesday night youth service, the first Wednesday night of the month. Uh, we always do our youth service, so uh, let's, um, kids, invite, invite your friends to come to be with you. And if they need a ride, I say this a lot, but we mean it. If they, no kid needs to stay home because they don't have a ride. And uh, we'll do anything that we can to try to make it possible uh, to get children here for the, for, the, uh, um, for the youth service this Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. Also, March the 6th will be our next Sunday not being the first Sunday night of the month, we will have our building fund offering, and uh, so be praying about that as well. The 17th of this month, I have rescheduled the trap of a fence class, and so it'll be uh, here at the church at 7 o'clock on a Thursday night, and so continue to be praying about that class. If you know somebody uh, that, that you'd like to bring, everybody's welcome. We come to be. A, we're gonna t we're gonna dig deep in the offense, in the uh, trap of offense. And there, there's a lot of people that uh, that deal with a bondage of having hard feelings trapped up on the inside. And and we're gonna deal with that. We're gonna answer some questions about uh, about how to forgive, when to forgive, and uh, who who is old forgiven and who's not. And we're gonna answer those questions. And and uh, again, it's a very very deep subject. And. And um, I think, I mean, which everybody is owed forgiveness. And, and, but we're going, to, uh, we're going to look into that and look at the biblical uh, principle of that. So, all right, the 18th will be on a Friday night. Joy 55 Club will be going out to eat. They're going to meet here at 5 o'clock. So um, mark it on your calendar, Joy 55, those that are 55 and up. Uh, mark it on your calendar and make plans uh, to attend that as well. Also, I want to say that tonight, directly after service, off camera, we're going to have just a really quick, uh, short business meeting and uh, just a few minutes. Got to, we're going to run something by uh, the body here, and uh, so that'll be right, just right directly 
uh, after service and will not will not keep you very long at all. Also, um, we want to also remember want you to remember uh, Brother Wilbur Eldridge family uh, the, in prayer. I announced this morning that he uh, done stepped in uh, to eternity, and uh, so let's remember him or his family and and uh, those that. Uh, known him this in the days to come, they they need your prayers for sure. Um, I missed a birthday this morning. I'm in trouble, but uh, Melinda Bishop she wanted everybody to know that the 24th is her birthday. And uh, no, speaking of Melinda Bishop, I want Mickey and Melinda to stand. These guys here were unable to be here. They had emergency in their family, and they had they're unable to be here. Uh, when we announced our new members a couple weeks ago, some time back, and I met with them, and uh, they are uh, part of our, they signed up for membership for Faith Worship Center, and I want you to know you're better to have them. And they're great people, great family. We welcome them. I talked with them a little bit before service, and we welcome you to the Faith Worship Center family. Can we give them a hand? Amen. Yes. <laughs> Amen. Appreciate them very much. Thank you so much. All right. Jessica, would you come? She's going to give a word of encouragement. I appreciate this family. They mean a lot to me. And uh, I'll tell you, you, you got to work pretty hard to outwork this family. They'll do anything you ask them to do, and I mean that. And uh, But we love them and appreciate them. No worries. I'm not going to be up here very long because when I'm nervous, I talk super fast. So... <laughs> so don't be, you know, I, don't, I have a lot of notes, but I'm not going to be up here that long. Um, <laughs> so I'm really honored that the pastor asked me to do the word of encouragement. But when he texted me, my first thought was no, because my heart is racing right now. <laughs> like, it is way different than being in front of the kids, let me just tell you. Um, but I, I didn't want to disappoint him, so I obviously said yes because I'm up here. Uh, but then I had no idea what I was going to say because we have so many um, great examples of Christian men and women Amen. in this church that, like, who am I? What am I going to say to encourage um, any of them? But the more I prayed about it, the more that, um, that, God placed, that God placed this scripture on my heart. Um, and it's Romans chapter 8, verse 26. Um, and it says, likewise, the Spirit also helps our infirmities, for we know not what we, sh what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself makes inter intercessions for us with the groanings which cannot be uttered. Um, so when, I, when we first started coming, we were doing the, the Romans class, the last time we did the Romans class, and the scripture that, this scripture was so encouraging to me because... I was just starting out, didn't know how to pray. Like, I knew that you're supposed to, but, I mean, big almighty God, I didn't know what I was going to say to him, you know. And so I just didn't know what to say. So this scripture was very encouraging to me because it took the inner groanings of, of me and it just, you know, made intercessions and just presented it to this great, well-worded prayer <laughs> to the Lord. And, and so it was very encouraging to me. So this scripture was like dropped almost immediately on my heart when after I replied yes. Um, but what I love about this scripture, um, oh, I'm sorry, I'm jumping ahead of my notes. Let me backtrack here. <laughs> um, when you when you don't know <laughs> when you don't know what to pray, um, I was thinking about this today, and the war, the movie The War Room. I don't know if anybody has seen that movie before. But this was totally me when I first started. I just sat in, you know, in my prayer time, and I just kind of sat in silence because I'm like, I don't know what to say. And but this scripture is 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 great because whether you don't know what to say or you're in a the trial of your life and you're so broken that you don't have anything to say, this scripture is should be an encouragement to you because. The Holy Spirit comes into your heart and he takes the inner workings, the inner groanings of your heart. And he, when you don't have anything to say, he, he puts it to the Lord and he, and he will come and meet your needs. Um, flip the page here. <laughs> um, 
It also says in scripture that the Lord knows what we are in need of before we even ask. So we don't, the Lord just wants us to ask. He knows what's on our heart. He already knows what is, what we are going to ask for, what we're, what we're in need of. And if it's in the, the Lord's will, then he's going to, he's already provided a way for us to have that. I mean, we have access to the one that knows the beginning and the end. And so, um, all we have to do is just put our faith in Jesus and what he did on the cross, and he's there ready and waiting to help us and already interceding in, in, our, in, our, in our being. So um, I just hope that, that this, is an, this scripture is as much an encouragement to you as it was to me. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Bless you, Ma, that's great. Uh, I, I'll tell you. I don't know how many times in my life I've been in situations where I didn't really know what to say. All I could say, I, I can't, but you can. That's right. I need your help, you know. And I think, I think uh, Sister Grace Brumley sings a song that you have to listen to my heart because I don't have the words. That's right. <laughs> I don't have the words. You just have to listen to my heart. And uh, God knows. He knows what we need. I appreciate that word. That was great. Kersey, would you come? Bless them in song. Looking for answers I need a way out You've been trapped in that trial Oh, sorrow and doubt You saw a trickle of sunlight you found no escape just hold on to his promises he said that he'd make a way he'll make a way in the middle
I enjoyed that. Good job. Good song. Amen. We want you to stand again across the building. As they're coming back, we're going to continue to worship the Lord. Or we're going to give you a chance to bring your need to the Lord. you got a special need. Maybe you need a touch in your body, something in your family. God only knows. But we know that God's able to meet that need. Amen. He's able to meet each and every need. Amen. Would you bring your need to the Lord at this time? Family, would you come and help us tonight? Come on, guys.
Lord, it's my desire for anything that is not of you and is of me. Lord, I want more of you and less of me. So You want more of it tonight? Well, cause I want more. Well, I want more. Well, I want more of you, Jesus. Well, I want more. Praise the Lord. I want more. Come on, worship Him tonight. I want more of you, Jesus. Well, I want more. Well, I want more. Won't you give me more of you, Jesus? Well, I want more. Won't you give me more? Get your mind up on the Lord. Open up your heart tonight. Come on, let this song be your prayer. So oh, yes. Oh, yes. Won't you empty me? And then, won't you fill me? With you. Lord, it's my desire for anything That's right. well, that is not of you. Oh, God. It is of me, but I want more of you and less of me. Because I want more, well, I want more, well, I want more of you, Jesus. Well, I want more. Yeah. Well, I want more. Well, I want more of you, Jesus. Well, I want more. Well, I want more. Yeah. Well, I want more of you, Jesus. Well, I want more. Won't you give me more? Cause I want more of you. So be empty me. Lord, won't you be Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I know we're about to move into preaching and the message tonight, but I, I've had this course on my heart and my mind really all week long at times. There's no secret, and nobody here is ignorant to the fact that not just our nation, but our world as a whole is in a mess. Everybody watched the news when Russia attacked Ukraine and You've seen the videos of the people running scared and people not knowing what to do and all of them sad and heartbreaking. Everybody looking for somebody for an answer. Everybody's looking to somebody for an answer. But you know what? They've looked everywhere except for in the right place. Because we know what the answer is. Amen? And the answer is a man called Jesus. His name is Jesus. Are you here tonight? I said, we know a man by the name of Jesus. I will never be disrespectful to the President of the United States whether I agree with him or not. I won't be disrespectful to the office and I don't think it's right for anybody else to do it. Whether you agree with your leaders, whether you agree with legislation or whatever is going on, bottom line, we need to remember who our King is. And I'm not subject to the government of the world before I'm subject to the government of God. And regardless of what happens in this world, everything is going to be all right. Amen? 
Because I know a man by the name of Jesus. I just want to worship to this song just very briefly tonight. Just let the Lord move. But just close your eyes and let's worship. Go ahead. What a powerful name it is. Hallelujah. What a powerful name Christ my Lord. Come on, worship with me for just a moment. It is. Nothing. What a powerful name. Come on, sing it. It's a powerful name. Hallelujah. My king tonight. What a Hallelujah. Name it is. Nothing, Nothing compares. compares. To this. What a powerful name. name it is. The, name the name of Jesus. Of Jesus. The world needs to know this. You have no rival. You have no rival. God, you have no, no equal. equal. Now, now and forever. Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the glory. Yours is the name. Of all all names. Come on, church, worship the Lord. You have no rival. No rival. God, you have no, no equal. Name. What a beautiful name it, it is. is. Hallelujah. What a beautiful name, name it, is. it is. The, the name, name of Jesus. Of Jesus Christ, Christ my, my King. King. What a beautiful name. What a beautiful name. Nothing compares to this. this. What, what a beautiful, beautiful name. name it is. The, the name. name. Think about it. What a powerful, what a powerful name. name Demons tremble at the mention the of his name. name. Of Hallelujah. Jesus Christ, my, my King. King. What, what a powerful, powerful name it is. God, nothing, nothing compares to you. It's a name above all names. What a powerful Hallelujah. name it is. The, the name. name of Jesus. Come on, if you're saved, sing it to it. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus Christ tonight. We're asking, God, that you would move upon the nations that are under attack. 
God, we pray for Ukraine. We pray for Russia. We pray for the world system as a whole. God, we know of a surety, Lord, that we are in the last of the last days, the last hours of the last days. And if there was ever a time that the church of the living God needed to rise up, Lord, and believe you for a moving and an outpouring of the Holy Spirit, Lord, it is now. God, I pray that you in this day that we live in, that we would see a harvest of souls like we've never seen before. I pray that you would save the lost, heal the sick, and set the captive free. Lord, and use it all to draw your children and your people back to you. I pray for every pastor, every behind every pulpit, Lord, across this nation, across this world. One more time, let us have a burning desire for the ministry and the moving of the Holy Spirit like we've never had before. I ask in the name of Jesus Christ that your children, that your people, that the the layman, every believer, God, would have a hunger and a desire for an outpouring of your Spirit like we've never seen, Lord. God, we need revival. And we know, Lord, that you're able to do, uh, to bring revival to us, Lord. Uh, In the name of Jesus Christ, we ask that you move upon this nation and upon this world. God, and we give you praise and we give you glory for it. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. Would you give Jesus a hand clap of praise tonight? Amen. 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 Thank you, singers and musicians. It's tempting to just let them sing that one more time. But I'll tell you what. Singers, musicians, when I get done, be ready to come back. Because we're probably going to pick up right where we left off. Because everything Pastor said goes right along with what we have to say tonight. Because who knows, there's a lot going on in our lives and in this world. But who also knows that Jesus is still the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He is still upon the throne and every evil principality and power is still under his foot. There is nothing that is too big for God and anything and everything that we face is not taking him by surprise. So do we know that tonight? If you will, turn with me to the book of Luke. Luke chapter 21, and we're going to start at verse 34. This has been on my mind most of all week. It's been there, and I've just not been able to get away from it. But Jesus would say in Luke 21, verse 34, and take heed to yourselves, least at any time your hearts be overcharged. Or you might understand it a little better if we said weighed down or heavy. With surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life. And so that they come upon you unawares. For as a snare shall it Come on all them who dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch ye, therefore, and pray. Always that you may be accountable or accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass. And to stand before the Son of Man. Ain't that the main goal? To be able to one day look your Savior in the eye. One day be able to stand in front of the Son of Man. And hear him say, well done, my good and faithful servant. One day being able to not have a care, not have to worry about sickness, disease, wars. Are we here tonight? You know, I knew this was going to be tough before I got up here. The anointing coming off Kersey's song a while ago, I mean, it was powerful. So are we here? Do we believe this tonight? So if we will... Will you help me and pray before we get started? We thank you, God. 
God, we thank you for this opportunity, God, one more time, God. And God, I come to you tonight knowing, God, that I am not able to do what you have called me to do tonight without your help. So I ask God, I ask God that you will anoint me, God, and I pray, God, oh, I rebuke any evil principality, any power that tries to hinder what goes forth tonight, God. I pray, God, that you will open our ears and our hearts, God, that we may be able to hear, that we may be able to receive, and God, I pray for the grace that is you are able to provide that allows us, God, to apply these truths to our lives. And God will give you all the praise, honor, and glory in the name of Jesus. Amen. You know, it's no secret, as Pastor was saying, you turn on the news and all you're going to see or hear about is how Russia has invaded Ukraine. You're going to see preacher after preacher saying that prophecy is being fulfilled. You're going to look and see all over how Putin has already told his army to be on high alert for their nuclear warheads. You're going to see all these things and it can be a tad overwhelming. You know, in the last year, year and a half, maybe two years, I don't even know how long it's been going on. But I have just kind of sat back and watched the church as a whole. Not, just, not speaking of this church, but the church as a whole. And you know, we've had seen churches over the last year to be closed down months on end. We have seen the COVID come through and just change people's way of thinking left and right. We have seen churches and we have seen communities and governments. And sometimes I just have to sit back and wonder, church, where is our faith? Are we still believing in the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords or are we believing in a mask or hand sanitizer? Because my Bible tells me that my Jesus, my God is still my, oh, I'm in, in his shadow. I am under his protection. Nothing shall come upon me unless allowed by him. I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's a sickness or a disease or car wreck. I don't care if it's a war. I don't care what's happening in this world. We have two ways to look at it. We can either look at it through our worldly eyes or we can look at it in the spiritual. Jesus, right before what we just read, said, All things shall be fulfilled. There shall not be anything be left out. And yes, we're seeing fulfillment of prophecies because we are told that there will be wars and rumors of wars. Evil will be called good and good will be called evil. We see all these things in church. I'm afraid it's taken many of us by surprise. Yes. We hear we should use our better judgment. Call me whatever you want to call me. Tonight, I am using my better judgment. I'm placing my faith in the one that is able. I'm placing my faith in Jesus and what he's already accomplished. Oh, I know we've lost loved ones. I know we've lost people that we care about. I know that there's been people that are sick, and are sick with cancer and there are still people that are suffering. There are still loved ones that are lost, and we might not even know or see how that's ever going to come about. But you know, we get so entangled and engrossed in this life, we forget that this world is not our home. We forget that eternity, eternity is what we have to look forward to because this life is but a vapor. For Job, sitting in ashes and in sackcloth and bulls, would say, Oh, oh, for I know that my Redeemer liveth. Oh, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. You know, Job sat there in a situation that many of us could never even imagine. And they, oh, though my God may slay me. Oh, I know my Redeemer liveth. And I know one day he will stand upon this earth again. Are we able to say that tonight? That's right. You know, in our text, where he's looking, it says, And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be charged or weighed down, heavy, or surfeiting, or debauchery, debaucheries or feeding, it's a hard word really to describe there because when you begin to look it up, there's several different meanings that your Strong's Concordance in your Greek word studies and all these other 
things will take you to, but if I could put it into a picture for you, that way maybe we can understand what Jesus is talking about is, many of you may not know, but if you can imagine being involved in parties and hangovers and how a hangover will make you feel you have a splitting headache and you know you just really don't feel like doing anything but you really go to these parties day after day after day and you actually completely fail in a moral aspect and that's what we're talking about here we have put ourselves people that are putting themselves in a position of debauchery or to be able to completely fail morally. And drunkenness. Ain't that funny he puts that right behind there? Alcohol has no place in the life of a believer. Drunkenness and cares of this life. He, Jesus left nothing out. What's he trying to get us to see? Because I know he's talking to the nation of Israel right now. He's talking to people that here in just a few years after the crucifixion, they're going to see their nation under attack. They're going to see the temple be demolished. In A.D. 70, their lives are fixing to change forever. He is trying to get them to see as us right now. That you know all these things are going to come to pass. All these things you're going to be faced with. But where is your care at right now? How are you looking at it? Are we truly living our life for the Lord? Is our care about our ministries about seeing one more soul saved? Or is it about what's going on over in Russia? I might take some slack for this, but I'm going to say it anyways. Oh, I, I'm not a political person. Not at all. Because I know what my Bible says. I know who places governments and who takes governments out. I know who is, it, who is in charge, and I know what has to happen. We should not be taken by surprise. You know, if he... Putin does do something ignorant. Is that really going to get you to quit believing? You know, there's a sense of excitement that should be going around because we should know every day that things like this happen. It's one day that we're closer to our Redeemer. It's one day closer. Church, we don't have any time to waste. I, I speak to you tonight to, just to reassure you and to edify you. There is no other time than better time than right now to be a part of the church, the church that is able to reach the lost, the church that is able to reach out and actually show the world what a true church is supposed to be. None of that fake garbage that we like to see on TV where people's just giving a motivational speech or people's running around in the flesh acting like it's a, something in the spirit. They're mimicking something that is real, but it's not real because it's something of the flesh. The world has not hardly seen the true church because the true church has been hidden under the bushel. You know why this church is growing? Because it's preaching and teaching a truth that is actually changing people's lives. And they're excited about it. They're going to tell their family. They're telling their co-workers. They're telling their friends. Because it's something that's true. It's something that is truly working in the lives and the hearts of believers. Because the world is already tired of fake. You know, when we're talking about the cares of this life, and I know we like to shout whenever we start talking about healing. Oh, I want to see people healed. But I want to see people saved first. Right. We like to shout whenever we start talking about God moving in our marriages. Oh, I want to see the marriage healed. But even above that, I want to see the family saved. We start to shout about God moving in our finances, in, in our jobs, and in our lives. But I really just want to shout because we're taking what we know and edifying other people and talking to the world. Amen. The cares of this world, we should not be going around like we have a hangover and is drunk. 
that okay? I'm not saying that we're a bunch of drunks because I don't drink, I ain't done it since I got saved. Well, actually, I tried once. I, I lied, I guess. I did try once, and the Holy Spirit told me no. Just, just a half a sip. I don't even remember if I swallowed it. I felt so bad. But you know, when you walk around, as a lot of the church does, and they cannot tell you apart from the world. What hope are you giving them? What hope are we giving the world whenever the church is as scared as what the world is? We should. We. What does the Bible say about being afraid? What is fear? Where does it come from? Is fear of God? But how many churches were so scared they closed their doors? And again, I know I'm walking on shaky ground. I mean, no disrespect. And it might be a little tough. Because the truth of the matter is, I don't care how careful you are, if it is the will of God, you are not going to be able to outrun it. You're not going to find a place safe enough that God's not going to test your faith. That's right. You know, again, I'm not trying to be something that I'm not. I'm not, I'm not a fake person. If you've known me very long, I have problems. I have times of... I don't, just, I mean, times of oppression as all of us do. I can't always walk around with a smile on my face. I can't always go through every day jumping up and down with joy. But every day there's joy in my heart because I know no matter what, at the end of the day, I am a child of God. And you know, sometimes it's the little things. Whenever the cares of this life, whenever the burdens of this world begin to weigh me down, that I'm able to look back on. Because who knows in the wor real world that sometimes you've got to walk alongside and work with people that need a little guidance. And you know, I've seen it time and time again where just being around people and not partaking in the things that they partake, they change the way they act around you, and they begin to watch you. And actually, a lot of times without even talking to you about it, they begin to be interested more in the church. And I've even seen some to start churches to try to find what you have. And you know, when we are burdened down with the cares of this world, Who's a little burdened down tonight? I know a lot is. I don't even know everybody's problems, and I don't know. I'm not prophetic right now. I just know. Sometimes we can sense things, and sometimes we just... I have gotten to a place where when I know that I know that I know I'm where I need to be in a message, I know it's there for a reason. We're burdened down with the cares of this world. We're burdened down with everything that's on the media. We're burdened down with financial problems. We're burdened down because the Satan continues to throw that snare out. You know, 35 says, For as a snare shall it come on all them who dwell on the face of the whole earth. The snare there, yes, Jesus is talking about, Brother Swaggart will say he's talking about the second coming. It's going to come upon the whole earth, and there's going to be no escaping it. But I believe also that if we put it and apply it to what we just read, it's the, just the snare of the devil. Do you know what a snare is? I was thinking about this in the middle of the week. The snare, it is a primitive hunting tool that you would see even before the days of Job. Because we read about the snare also in Job. But the snare is the most simple device. Because it's just a piece of string or wire that is designed to make a loop. And 
Do you know where you put this snare? You put it in a path where whatever you're trying to catch is walking. He's, tr- he's putting a snare in the path that you're walking right now. And do you know what happens whenever you step in a snare? Nothing if you just step in it. But the only time that a snare is really effective is when you walk into it and then you feel it begin to tighten up and it begins to tighten and then you get afraid and the more that you try to get away from it and the more you get scared and you begin to run and you try to get away, the tighter it gets and the tighter it gets, it starts to suck the life of whatever's around it and the more it sucks the life out, the harder it is to breathe and then the harder it is to breathe. Before long, you're sitting there because you can't move anymore because you've done fought until you've killed your own self. You fight and fight. And what the prey normally don't understand, when caught in a snare, when you feel it tightening up, if they would just stop, if they would just stop and stand still, it wouldn't get any tighter. It wouldn't get any harder to breathe. It wouldn't, you wouldn't have to fight any harder. Do you know why? Because without your, yourself fighting the battle, there is nothing to make it tighter. And if you was just to stand there, if whatever it was around, you would just stand there until someone named Jesus would come along and loosen it up and begin to take it off, there would be no struggling. There would be no fighting. There would be no shortness of breath. There would be no spiritually dying. Because that's how a snare works. And that's the devil's favorite trick. He has, I've seen him take these pestilences the COVID. I've seen him take cancer. I have seen him take this deal with Russia and set it out there as a big snare and it's just one after another continue to walk into it and they're so afraid of what's coming. And I'm sitting back just watching because I know by watching we're getting closer. I know by watching, little by little, the Lord's coming back. But much of the church, and if we put it on a personal level, when we have the cares of this life, and it begins to inject itself into our Christian walk, and we know what we're doing is wrong and we know what we're doing is not pleasing to God. We are so full of pride. We are so full of self that we are not able just to stop and say, Help! Help! Jesus, help! Instead, we're fighting and we're struggling. We're trying to run away from where we got caught at. Do you know why they leave links on the snare? Because the idea is that Whenever you get caught, they want to give you run, room to run. Because if they can get you to run and then you get to the end of your rope. Well, have you ever heard the saying, we're going to give you just enough rope, just don't hang yourself? Because you can have so much slack, but if you begin to run in the wrong direction and you hit it full speed, tightening up so much faster. And I'm afraid a lot of the church is running full speed away from the message of Jesus Christ and Him crucified. I'm afraid that we have run so far into the ideas of the world with the smog machines and the fancy lights that we're not even allowing the Holy Spirit to draw people near anymore. I'm afraid we have put so much stock into a person that we're not even able to rely on our faith in Jesus to do something. I'm afraid that we sometimes travel so many miles to have a certain person to pray for us that our faith is truly not even in Jesus. All the while we're going to church. All the while we're going to church thinking that we're doing good. But we're in a snare. 
You see, it's not leaving anybody out. When we truly look at the Bible for what it is, when we look at it and see that Jesus truly did supply everything, he left nothing out. We are able to really sit there when we feel that snare begin to be tight. You know how many times I've been caught in a snare and fought with all I've had? Fought and fought and fought until I wanted just to give up. The spiritual life in me was just drained. I couldn't breathe. I didn't know where to go. Couldn't read my Bible. Couldn't keep going because the cares of this world had gotten so strong on me. I was worried about things that truly had no effect on eternity. I know I've got family. I know you've got family. I know we've got cares. And I know. But what is the most important to us? You see... Jesus says, for as the snare shall come, it shall on all them who dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch ye therefore. You are supposed to be watching. Therefore. What are you watching out for? Are you watching for the snares? Are you watching for the things that the devil is trying to use to steal your faith? Because I used to, I was afraid... And still am, if you quit coming to church, you've done. The devil's already starting to sort you off. But the more I see and the more I read, the biggest thing the devil wants to do, he don't have to steal your faith all at once. He can just get you to change the object of your faith out of Jesus Christ and Him crucified into anything else. Are you watching for that? Are you believing in self? Are you believing in mandates? Are you believing in the media? Are you believing in who is the president? Where are we believing and trusting in Jesus? Is this okay? Okay. I'm not trying to be mean again. I'm, I, if you knew my heart. Because my, my main concern is the edif- besides people being saved is the edification of the body. If we can't sta- stand up here and preach and teach what's true, what's tough sometimes, are we really doing any good? You see... Watch ye therefore and pray always. I felt it encouraging. The word of encouragement today about praying. You know one of the most important things you can do as a parent, as somebody a body in the in the member of Christ, a member of Christ, a person that is in the body of Christ, the most important thing you can do is pray. Do you know praying at the end of the day is more important than getting us get up here and stand behind somebody or stand behind this pulpit and say a few words? Because without prayer, you're not going to know what to say. Without prayer, you're not going to be led and guided. And that goes for our personal lives also. You know, when we begin to pray and seek God, He's able to show us what's coming towards us. He is able to guide us and lead us in every aspect of our lives. You know, there is a proper way to pray, and I've already talked to Pastor about it. I ain't said anything to anybody else. And I don't know why I started here, but I've been wanting to teach on prayer and how to properly pray because it's such a vital role you know back I I guess I wasn't in church but the elders will talk of prayer meetings that lasted all night or big tent meetings that would just go on where is that now where's that fervor where's the prayer that the church used to have 
It's a commodity that is leaving the church. It is leaving because it's not preached and taught as it should be. We just want to hear you shout and we want to hear you sound happy and send you on your way. Well, we don't. I'm talking generically. I don't care if you shout. I don't, I mean, used to it bothered me. Sit up here and talk for 45 minutes and no one say nothing. Boy, that bothered me. It took me a little bit to be able to get over it. Now, hey, as long as I say what's on my heart, it's up to you what you do with it. And I have found sometimes the more quiet we are, the more the Holy Spirit is actually driving truths into our hearts. But you know prayer is so important. I've seen my wife wake up in the middle of the night many nights praying for certain people, praying for family, praying for things. I don't even know if she really knew what she was praying for but felt the urge to pray. And over and over again I have seen prayers here and there. And even my personal prayer life. I've seen these prayers come to pass a little here and a little there. Yes, there are some big prayers that have yet to be answered, but I also there's prayers that I see God working in right now. At the end of the day, I know I pray, and I know that I ask God because I serve a big God that is able to do more than I could ever imagine, but if it is not His will, if it's not His will, I really don't want it. Because it's not my will but his. My will is going to take the easy way out. It's going to give me what I desire. I don't look at the big picture. But prayer, it says pray always. We should be praying for our nations. We should be praying for our leaders, whether if we like them or not. We should be praying for the church as a whole. We should be praying for pastors. We should be praying for the youth leaders, we should be praying for the singers, musicians, we should be praying for the people, just the members of the body, because without each and every one of us, there would be no body, because you cannot have a head without the feet. You cannot have the hand without the arm. You get what I'm saying? There is not an insignificant person within the church. And we know that Jesus is the head of the body, but if there is nothing else underneath it, He's left all alone. So we must always be praying. And pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass. You know, some people struggle with that. Because you can pray... And if you told this verse to someone of the world sitting in the middle of Ukraine right now that didn't believe, would they be feeling like they was fixing to be able to escape that? It's not talking about being able to escape the things that we have to go through. It's not talking about the financial difficulties we will encounter, the marriage problems we will encounter, the children problems we will encounter, the fight of faith that we will experience each and every day. It's talking about being able to escape this life and travel on to eternity with our Lord and Savior. It's talking about being able to stand before the Son of Man. So I come tonight. I wanted to just encourage you, and I forgot to give you the main thought, but my main thought tonight was, I want to encourage you to watch and pray. Watch and pray. Yes, watch. you can watch the news. You can watch each other. Watch for the snare of the devil and pray 
Pray for direction. Pray for your church. Pray for your family. Pray for your nation. Pray one for another. Bear one another's burdens because God is still able to answer the prayers. God is still able to move in ways you could never imagine because I promise He is still the Lord of lords and the King of kings. Do you know why people get excited when you begin to say that? Do you know why people begin to get excited when you talk about the rapture of the church? Do you know why people begin to get excited when you talk about about heaven it's because it's the blessed hope we have a hope in Jesus and if our faith shall not fail one day and one day soon we will be called to see the king one day soon we'll be called up into the air to meet him in the skies one day I, I, I mean hey 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 guess what I'm a child of God I am a literal son or daughter of God I am his he is my father. I'm able to holler out, Abba, Father, which is just Father, Father. And he gives me his ear. And he knows my needs. He knows what I have desi my desires. He knows what I have need of. Why should I have to worry about the cares of this world when I have someone to lead me and to guide me and to watch out for me? Yes, he will not put on nothing more on me more than what I can bear, but he will give me a way of escape. It's not saying we're not going to bear it, but through him and through our faith in Jesus Christ, we are able to withstand it. Right. We are able to sit there and uh, instead of allowing the snare to tighten up and to just suck the life out of us. We are able to call on the one that is able to loosen up the snare and to get us out. We are able to call on the one because we have access into the holy of holies. Do you understand that, church? There is nothing that he does not want to do for you. Man. Tough crowd tonight. I'm liking it more than you are, I guess. You know, I know what it's like for many years to live without Jesus. And the cares of the world was a lot worse then. Because there was something in me that didn't want to die. Oh, I want to see my kids grow up. I want to see grandkids if, if the Lord tarries. But at the end of the day, I know that I know that I know that my Redeemer liveth. And one day he will stand upon this earth. And one day I will look him in the eyes. One day I will be able to throw my crown of glory at his feet and be able to say, Father, and listen to him say, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Well done. That's hope. That's the blessed hope. So I wanted to encourage you tonight. Singers, musicians, come on up. But I wanted to encourage you. I don't know what it is that life's throwing on you right now. I don't know the burdens and the cares that just seem like they are overwhelming you. I don't know what the devil is truly using to try to get you to change your faith into self or into any other means than what he ha Jesus has already meant for you. Because if you keep your faith, if we all keep our faith in Jesus and what he has done, we cannot fail. We will not fail. You may go through a few things, but you're going to come out on the other side because he don't just split the Red Sea or the Jordan. He can split whatever river's in front of you. He's able to see you through. He's able to see you and give you more than you could ever imagine. He's able to restore things. He's able to give you things you cannot even think of. So why, be care so why should we care? about the cares of this world. Why shall we be so naturally minded that we're scared to do anything? Do you know, and it, this statement, it just come into my brain, so if I say it wrong, excuse me. You ever hear the statement where you have won the battle but you have not won the war in many places I'm afraid Satan might have won the battle like the prisons like the places that the governments in different places and sh shutting down the prison so ministers are not able to go and preach the gospel churches being shut down one after another for months on end 
not being able to proclaim the gospel. How many lives were affected? How many souls did not get to hear the gospel that might would have been changed if we would have stood on the truths of the word of God? How many times was there people that needed the fellowship of the body that didn't get it? How many people left church because they were shut down and never come back because they was tucked back in into the cares of the world? We cannot allow the world to get in the way of what God has in store for us, church. We cannot allow. We can't allow one soul, not one person, not one family member to be left outside because people's too afraid to stand up in the midst of all the chaos and all the diseases and all the oppositions and preach the name of Jesus. We cannot be the people that's afraid to go into places and be afraid to preach the name of Jesus. We cannot be a people that will not stand on the word of God. Will you stand with me? If they begin to play, I just, go ahead. I want you to listen to the words of this. I don't know what they're going to play, but I want you to begin to think about all the cares of this world as, all, as the cares that are, you are dealing with and struggling with. The finances, the marriages, the family, the work, the bondages, the nicotine, the alcohol, the gluttony, the anything and everything, the backbiting, the murmuring. The list goes on and on. But what cares? What cares? I've been separating you from the truth. Go ahead. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawn, it's time to sing your song. got to say this as they begin continue to sing the cares of this world there is still one name that is above all others he is able to enter in he is able to loosen the snare he is able to move and to redirect and to build your faith like none other and his name is Jesus his name is Jesus oh his name is Jesus Jesus is able to move in your situation right now. Jesus is able to touch you and answer your prayers right now. Jesus is able to move in the things that you have been praying for right now. No, 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 the devil is a liar, but he is able to do exceedingly, abundantly above all you could think or have imagined right now where you stand. By the power of his spirit, he is able to answer each and every prayer. So I encourage you to get in and worship, to come up and fill these altars and to encourage you to seek God for the things that are is on your heart and on your mind right now.
that we was encouraged and edified because the cares of this world it's easy for them to get us down it's easy for us to see all the things that's going to and fro and I know uh, there's not a one of us that is not going to be unaffected by the things that are all going on either by inflation or by the things just anything that is coming through but we've got to remember that we have a blessed hope. That the cares of this world and the trials and the things we are going through, they is but a vapor. They is not going to last long because by our faith, we are going to see the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And I pray and I hope that we will continue, as Pastor Brian says, I continue just to make the main thing the main thing. Because if we continue to keep our faith in Jesus Christ and Him crucified, we cannot fail. 
if we continue to pray and ask God to embolden us in our ministries and in our walks and embolden us to be able to talk to the people that's out in the world. To, you know, there's no limit of what we are able to do if we just continue to keep our faith and continue to ask God for direction and guidance. Because all it takes is a willing vessel and an ear to hear. So I hope we was encouraged, and I hope that as we go throughout this week, we can have a just be a light and to share the good news with others. Do you have any other announcements? We're going to have a quick meeting right after for the members. So if you are a member, just hang around. But... I'm going to go ahead and pray and dismiss us. Lord, Father God, we thank you. We thank you.